Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left and gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound and follow the sound please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, bring your attention to your body. Observe head to toes yourself. And say, Sopatveva, O. Oh. May I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation, and let observe the, the impermanent and unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within any sensation arise in you. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. So following my words mentally, relax your body. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth, relax your tongue, relax your mouth, relax your 
relax your throat. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Now we're going to relax our internal body organs. You may don't know where it's exactly located, but just with the name have intention to, to release it. Relax your lungs. Relax your heart. Relax your liver. Relax your kidneys. Relax your cold bladder. Relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles.
Just bring my attention to your right nostril and keep observing the sensation of your right nostril. Allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen naturally. And keep your attention to your left nostril. Now we gently and deeply breathe in, breathe out three times and try to find the, and locate the sensation of in front of your nose and your upper lip area. And observe the inhalation, exhalation as it is. Knowingly, this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Don't try to inhale or exhale. Don't try to verbalize your experience. Just simply allow it to happen itself and observe and recognize. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. You no need to, no need to try too hard to look for sensation. Just simply keep observing. Let everything to settle down as it is.
follow the entire continuation of the inhalation and exhalation and recognize the depth and the length of the each and every inhalation and exhalation. Also, you may experience some inhalation and exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just accept it. Keep focus your mind only to the sensation. Whatever experience come to you, don't categorize. Don't get it as a name or form. Just try to see the change out of that experience. Be with the change. Follow the change. See the change.
Bring attention to your body. And observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. And also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so up, real or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. to your backside. To your left side. and to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, 
spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, when it comes to meditation, one of the important thing that you have to remember, your thoughts are kind of like full of energy. It doesn't matter whatever the thoughts come to you. It's come within you. You cannot categorize this is a bad thought, this is a good thought, it is a thought. So if you able to, to settle down with that thought itself, rather than projecting or rather than looking something from outside to to find any satisfaction if you allow it to settle down within yourself and you can gain gain to calmness so gaining this calmness is the foundation of your deeper spiritual journey because that sometimes the mind, when the mind becomes busy, that busyness becomes more and more and more powerful when we try to resist it. Not only the busyness, even the, the stress, anxiety, depression, fear, this all, the very nature is that. The reason is because it it's not separate from you. It is happening within yourself. So practicing meditation is a kind of like an art. You transform that all thoughts to one energy. So it kind of like, uh, if I get an example from this outside, it's like, as you know, this uh, fruit juicer. Look, that we we able to build rockets and people used to, to go far away in this universe. And the people live in the space center. You no, know, and we build up vehicles faster than animals. We build the ships and boats fast, can go faster than fish. But when it comes to this juice 
blender that there is no any blender. So when you put an apple, there is no any blender that you can find that this whole apple become liquid. That it's a, it's kind of like it, it's that it, there are always dust. And the, when it come to the juicer, there are always the fiber going out. And always the, and the other thing is they have a struggle to keep the vitamin and minerals and fiber with the, the, the whatever the juice come out of it. But still, there is no any juicer than when you put the, the apple or the any fruits or any vegetable, it's completely become liquid. But there is a possibility. And when it comes, when you eat the, the fruits or vegetables, that everything nourish your body. So if there is a if there is a juicer that when you put an apple or when you put the vegetables, it's completely become water without wasting anything. Nothing empty. Even there is no waste. There is nothing going out. When you put something and if it completely become and hundred percent without wasting any vitamin or minerals or fiber, that kind of a technique is called vipassana. Because the, all the thoughts that happening in you without wasting anything out of that thought, if you are able to transform that everything to the wisdom, that is a kind of like an art that you have to practice. So then practicing meditation doesn't mean you throw something from you and you gain something from outside. And that is the very behavior. It's a you know, psychologically, physically, the very behavior of our body is like that. The, as energy in our body, the whatever the chemicals that build into this body, that all the chemicals come to protect this body. There is no any chemical in our body happening Unless that the, the whatever the, the food, whatever we eat, it go, it's a flush out of the body and the water. So the whatever the chemicals inbuilt in our body, it is not harm for the body. That all the chemicals become harmful when we dismanage, when we not able to guide our thoughts our behavior, what happening, that chemical start to react in a different way. Otherwise, if you look at the, the stress, anxiety, fear, depression, this everything has a reason they are to become like that way. Only thing is we dismanage it. We have no knowledge to transform it to the right place. And because of that, what will happen? It is start to react in a different way. So then come to very first thing you have to remember. Come to a point when you sit for meditation, you have everything. You are complete. There is nothing. Oh, I, I need this. I want to be like this. Don't come to that kind of understanding. Just remember that everything is in you. 
And when you close your eyes without anybody or without anything this from outside world, unless these four elements, the heat, motion, liquidity, and hardness to, to bring the, the, the comfort to our body. Otherwise, when you sit in that sitting, you have to come to a point to settle down, you complete. And in that completion, you have to remember to calm down your physical eye. Because as example, so maybe you sitting in front of the computer or the phone or the TV and you close your eyes and time to time, time to time, you deeply projecting inside your eye to open, open and look, open and look. What happening? What is happening there? So like that. Even with the, the ear and sometimes around your house and maybe you can hear the sound or maybe other people working or doing some work, uh, things and talking, children. So many things can happen. You, you deeply projecting inside your ear, your consciousness towards that way. In that moment, you are sitting not going to be complete. See, it is inner behavior. It is naturally happening, that wonder mind naturally happening when somebody talk or even maybe you closing your eyes and you sitting and practice meditation, you hear somebody walking, then suddenly you start to follow that footsteps. So then what will happen? You already disconnect from the moment because yeah, it, it, then it become kind of like a, the footstep meditation because you, you follow that. It is start to take you there. Or maybe the smell come, the smell is start to take you there. Or maybe you thinking after meditation, or maybe uh, you went to market and you brought a packet of cookies or cake or donut or biscuits or something. It is there. It's the, so now practicing meditation then deeply it's, it's natural. It's deeply the desire come after meditation. You no, know, I'm going to have a tea and I'm going to have a, this cake or something like that. See, you feel so calm and you feel so relaxed, comfortable. Why? Because that is that already there, then you're going to do it and settle down. So, but still what you have to understand, your mind beyond your body. You have to come to a point to settle down in you. So all the thoughts with your eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mind consciousness, it needs to settle down into you, not to the outside. The very nature, we look something from outside. Always, we look for the satisfaction. Remember, there is nothing in the physical world, in this material world, there is nothing build up, something to fulfill your, your personal desire. There is nothing. Each and everything has its own cause and effect to be there like that way. Even the people, as example, when you look for the happiness through somebody, you know, then, then you can tell, oh, I love you. So it is your responsibility to make, make me happy. So, but the thing is, the other person also thinks the same thing. And when it comes to the, the, the group of people, each and every person has a personal desire to find the satisfaction and the happiness from others. So then when you jump to the middle of that group or the person, and if you look the satisfaction from waiting for the satisfaction and the happiness from that person, 
how that person going to make you happy it's not going to happen why because that person itself has its own way to to waiting for the satisfaction from outside there is no person come to this world thinking oh i came to this world to satisfy this person so like that way there is no person each and every person look something from outside outside that is the journey that we go so when it come to sitting because in ordinary life we we cannot do this it is very difficult because why because the mechanism inbuilt mechanism is like that we came to this world because of that to find the satisfaction to this eye ear nose tongue body mind fulfill the dreams it it's just not the sweet dreams it's a cinderella dreams you know which kind of like a, it's always we it, it uh, when we practice meditation one time one of our teacher told us it's a kind of like a, a robin hood mindset you know because always involving it something always involving it something so then when you sitting that's why it is it is art that you have to develop within yourself to settle down your eye settle down your ear settle down your nose tongue body and settle down your mind not to jump to whatever the past or the future so what is happening when you come to that level it, it in the beginning it going to be kind of like a, a turbulence you know it's a kind of like a, it's make you kind of like a distress so the, uh, the disease it's kind of like a, uh, make you unbalanced but at the same that that unbalance is the energy remember that when it come to our human life when you have the stress when you have the fear when you have the 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 anxiety that is the energy only thing is we look for comfort and we look for kind of like a, we have a mental attitude to for look for something rather than transferring this energy to good so if i give an example from the animals the deers if we, if the deers don't get stress they cannot run they become paralyzed so the deers run and they run more faster because when they get more higher stress otherwise they cannot run so when it come to your tranquility state to build up a very good tranquility state so whatever the stress and the whatever the anxiety whatever the depression whatever the fear in you once you rec once you recognize it and allow it to settle down within your practice rather than looking something from outside and that is what going to become the the energy because that recognition without that recognition is the important you recognize that how the mind so as example you close your eyes and then you you keep thinking about opening your eye and start to look for the the screen so then it becomes it's it's become kind of like a stress anxiety why at the very nature of the anxiety before something happen so whatever you project so that is the very that if the the current of the projection go higher that is the anxiety before something happen so whatever the mentally you project and that current when it go higher that become anxiety so then before you look into screen in your mind now you have oh i want to look i want to look i want to look when you see that thought and without opening your eyes allowing your mind to settle down it is okay 
I just wait a little bit. I'm not going to do this. So whatever happened, whatever it is there, it's okay. Why? Because my practice is important in this very moment. Opening eye, 24-7 I can do at any time. But in this very moment, I have to practice. When you think like that way, remember, because the, the, the chemical all come into your body is you. It's not, it's nothing come against you. We believe it like that way. No, 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 no. If I don't do this, uh, my free will going to come and go against me or kind of like, no. So whatever come to you, it's going to listen to you. Why? Because it is the same thought, not different. So when you, if you start to think in this sitting, I just settle down and I just practice meditation. So whatever it is there, it is okay. Let it happen. And after the bell ring, I open my eye. In that very moment, what's happening, you are, all the anxiety that you build in your mind start to get into your tranquility state. And then what happened? The next day, you feel more relaxed, comfortable. And the third day, you, you, you have the more wisdom to see it and the, your system start to build up to, to settle down. And then naturally, little by little, little by little, what will happen? The, the anxiety current become lower. In a certain level, that whatever that the, you decide, in that decision, everything going to be settled down. So you hear a sound and somebody talking, talking, talking. And then it make you kind of like, a, you know, why these people cannot understand this is my meditation time. So it's like that. You know? And then you, you, it make you kind of like a angry. Why? Because you like something else and somebody likes something else. So without the, the desire, without like, there is no anger. So the anger come as a result of whatever you like, you hold it to that. And then you come to the point to see a little bit. In the beginning, in the very first day, this is not going to work, but it works. That is how it works. There is no any other way. So in the beginning, you come to a point, you feel angry, you feel so mad, and these people keep talking, talking, talking. And you come to a point to understand, you are practicing meditation for you. Because it is your choice. And you look for the happiness and the calmness to, to yourself. And maybe talking, that is a meditation for that person. That is the way that person become happy. Maybe somebody talking or playing or watching TV. Remember, if you practice, if you understand this very clearly, anywhere, anytime you can, you can come to your tr tranquility state without any hindrance. With the understanding, it is not kind of like a robot or it is kind of not, not kind of like a machine. With clarity, you can come to the point and you understanding that that person. So we talk about the compassion, loving kindness. So that's mean giving the opportunities for others to become who they are. That is the best gift that you can give to them. That doesn't mean that the in, in a foolish way, you allow others to act. No. It's a, everybody need a freedom. Everybody need a space. It's called everybody need a, their elbow room when they sit. No. So then when you come to that, you recognize oh, how other person enjoying keep talking this. And maybe don't don't go to thinking, oh, what kind of talk they having, you know, unnecessary, this no, what is this talking? Don't don't think like that way. Because you have capacity to think like that. 
And sometimes he's thinking, or she's thinking, oh, look at that person. He's practicing, sitting and closing eyes, wasting time. So like that. So because of that, don't try to go and think like that way. Only thing is bring the compassion, loving kindness, and, uh, and be happy. So whatever that person. So that way, when you bring that happiness, the idea, what's happening? The anger cannot be. Have you ever seen in the human, in, in this human existence, there is no evidence. Happiness and the anger going to be both together. It cannot happen. That's why when we, whatever you want to do with other people and mostly you go to do it when they are happy. When they are happy, if you ask, they will do. They will give. You know? And you, you can deal with them when they are happy. They, because when the happiness is there and there is no anger. So then in your heart, not, not about it, in, in your heart you seeing how it boiling, 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 because you self-centered and you regarding to you and thinking. And what you like, you cannot gain it because of other people. And then you start to bring the, the joy to yourself and giving the freedom to them. Oh, they be they so happy. Let them to be happy like that way. Let them to talk like that way. Let them to behave like that way. Then you will think, Oh, then they will start to keep talking more and more and more. It never going to happen. It never going to happen. That is the beauty of this human mind. We think, oh, when we, if we don't go against something, it will destroy us. That's why that is the behavior of the, the anger. That's why we go with that. The anger never protect anything in the world. The, the love and kindness is the always become final solution. And surrender to situation is the final solution. So then remember, it doesn't matter they will stop talking in the future or not. Don't think about that. But come to a point in the, giving the freedom. So what will happen? Your anger start to transform to energy. That is the point you have to see. You gain that as the strength to transform it to the strength to settle down. That is where your samadhi going to become more sharp and solid. So the pain the same. Any dis that the discomfort the same. Remember this. Otherwise, there is no way that you get you going to gain something from outside. And you do that everything, the way you allow, settle down in your body. And once you come to that, even the silence, that whatever the, the, the moment you come to this, settle down, in that very moment, there is a wisdom. In the deeper level of set, when you are able to settle down with the silence, there is a wisdom you you going to recognize. That wisdom you will never find in any book. So that is the art you gain through practicing by yourself. So all these animal behaviors, it's a, it's a, you know they. they they are in they have this inbuilt behavior to transform all their this chemical whatever happening in them only to survive themselves there's nothing else no not for development only to survive we are the as human beings we are the have that nature and the practicing meditation is the, the art of transforming that all the energy and strength to, to uplift you 
and transform you and develop you to a better position. So that's why in, in day to day life, the whatever, even any single thought, any little thought, remember yourself, it always has some value. So don't, don't think we try to, we try to be so good inside us. You cannot. You cannot do that. We think, oh, this is bad, this is good, I want to be good like this way, I don't, I don't we want to be bad like that way. In conventionally, we can we can have a choice like that. But I'm talking deeply when it comes to our own mind. Each and every thought has a, its own nature related to you. So then learn to transform it. Learn to transform it. So when it comes to that, one time Buddha mentioned there are four things as a kind of like a thinking it is little, small. You cannot neglect it. Four things in the world. So one is fire. Even little bit of fire. You cannot neglect. Why? It can burn the whole California. You know, there is a possibility. So then you have to remember, don't neglect, even it is a little bit of fire. Don't think, oh, it is little, it will, you know, so your thoughts the same. Your thoughts the same. But you cannot, even though it is so danger, look at, you know, without fire, how we can live. You know, and even when the in the first time in the human history, our ancestors when they found the fire, it was a huge jump. It is a you know huge change in this human existence. So that is important. So like that, your thoughts, any thoughts, remember, there's you cannot throw anything. There is a, there is something in that. So. Samadhi is the moment you allow it to settle down. Rather than resisting it. So then you get into the each and every moment and settle down. And the second one is the, the snake. Cobra. So the snake is you cannot neglect because of it is little. It doesn't matter a little snake. If it bite, there it has poison. So then, even though it is poison, as you know, there are a lot of poisons we use to cure many diseases. Especially when a snake bite, the mostly the snake poison used as medicine to cure that person. So like that in day to day life. How much, look even at home, how many things you hold and maintain. And if you read that all the details, you recognize it warn you, you know, it's poison. But that doesn't mean you throw it away. So then you maintain it. So your thoughts the same. Remember that. You cannot neglect it. You cannot throw it away. You have to learn the art to use it and transform it to something good. Especially anxiety, stress, depression, the fear. Those are very good source that the, the, the currency, spiritual currency, if you able to, to maintain it to the right path. Because without stress, people cannot develop their, their life. They that the most successful people, even in conventionally, they have high stress. But the thing is, they know how to use it to the right place. So then always remember yourself and use it for a spiritual purpose to calm down. And then you will see each and every day, your, your practice become more and more and better. The third one is 
the little prince or princess belong to the king family. So the first one, the fire, and the second one, little cobra or the snake, and the third one, even little, you cannot neglect it. The little princess or prince. Why? Because one day, that prince or the princess become king or the queen. And look at that tomorrow, they are going to be a new president. And uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, look, that, that person, even the white vice president, look how they are alive. So if the people neglect in that position, how this person, when the person that tomorrow, when they become a new president tomorrow. So like that, that whoever belong to or whoever have as, a as children, you cannot neglect children, any child today in the world. Why? Because we don't know tomorrow what kind of life this child going to gain. Look at the Elon Musk. And when he, how about his childhood time? No, if, if somebody neglect or if somebody did something wrong to that child and this kind of person not going to come to the world. So like that you're a child. Don't look it as the, our mistake is we, even though we think, oh, you know, we provide everything we don't look inside the child. We look as a child, that's it. We don't go into in, in that child and we don't see the, the capacity of that child to grow and to become a better person and go beyond us. So that's why you always remember the, when you have children and don't look them as children. You have to look them as the future. It is totally different. When you look, when you treat them as your child, you keep the authority and you hold. No, you have to do according to me, do this way, do that way. Oh, it's like that. But when you look it as a completely new generation or the new opportunity or it's a kind of like your tomorrow it's kind of like your future it's totally different try it you will see your behavior you will see how you're going to change when you think this as my child you will always you know maybe you will abuse the child telling do this do that you know i am your father i am your mother do this, do that. I am your high priest. Do it, do that way. But if you start to think, oh, this is my future. Then you become more humble and you become more gentle and you become more careful. So that's why as a child, always remember, when you see, when you see the children, always remember, it, it, it can have, it, that child can become somebody in the future. So then give the opportunities and the, treat the child the best way that you can. And the fourth one is the little monk. And the Buddha mentioned, don't neglect the little, because the monk is little. And sometimes in temples, you know, where, like if there are a few monks, the, when the monks become older, that is where the, the people like to associate that monks. If the new, that the new monks, people don't appreciate that much, you know. And, but very old monk, when the monk become old and people respect and people appreciate and people listen. But what the Buddha said, never neglect the, the little monk. Why? Because that monk has ability to attain to enlightenment. So if you neglect the monk and maybe you uh, make fun out of the monk, 
and maybe you make jokes and uh, so like that way and or maybe you blame to monk and maybe if that monk attained to enlightenment you feel so sorry about you so don't make that mistake so this all so us the natural behavior fire and the snake so the fire is the natural behavior it representing the heat motion liquidity and hardness this all the the nature so then remember always don't neglect it it because of a small little look at even the nowadays that uh, that why we need so much this ventilator and to to bring this uh, air to our lungs look how valuable this air we we don't care when it is available like this way but how many how many people are struggling to breathe in? and when this little bit air cannot go into us the gap cannot fill remember it going to create a huge pain inside you so then you have to appreciate when you breathing moment by even it is invisible no you have to appreciate it day by day day by day and don't neglect anything because of it little and any animal the so the snake is the one animal remember any animal you we'll look at the bees you know that pollinate and help us to keep this all the food circle and the flowers and this nourishing this nature and this lot of insects that we we, we the insect that we don't see this lot of things around us so appreciate it it take you to a moment to transform your thoughts to different level another thing is the the children remember that to start to look them as your future future generation start to look them as a kind of like a, the the seed that have possibility to can nourish the entire universe like that way you see you it little but you transform your thoughts to different level and with the monks and the you give, give brain develop the spiritual connection with that also whoever practice meditation whoever do something and whoever try to learn something in a spiritual way you appreciate it and you help for them you share your knowledge you bringing them to that path you share and you protect them around it why because in the future maybe they going to go more to a more higher place so like that way there is nothing that going to come to this world or our life from outside world this is the, the same thing whatever happening around us we have to have power to transform it to a better energy so then you start it with your thoughts that all the the anxiety depression fear this everything and you know, start to bring it to inside you and use it as the source to to settle down to develop your tranquility state so that way and you will see there are a lot of energy you gain why because in the world more than any other time and the stress and anxiety is the the serious killer all over the world depression this everything killing everybody every day 24/7 this is not this virus it uh, when the vaccine vaccination come or through the by the time this will change but how about the stress anxiety and depression 24/7 in the dreams also it keep killing people so then if you practice meditation little bit you develop a art that whatever that inner chemical you transform that everything to kind of like your your meditation itself become a kind of like your medication it make you healthy 
it make you healthy not by just physically you mentally you are spiritually also it become you become healthy so that's why you have to keep practice this little by little little by little with the right purpose and at the same time you have to learn little by little to settle down with your eye ear nose tongue body mind within you not looking something from outside in a certain level when you keep practice like that way you come to a point you able to settle down with your thoughts without depending from anything that is the tranquility state so once you once you come to that you are greed hatred and the delusion and the, all the five hindrances settle down disappear and the the mind going to become so purify and clear and strong sharp with that sharpness with that clarity your perception going to become more clear and that is where you going to understand how things come to be as they are when you have that knowledge naturally your experience itself become your wisdom that wisdom itself become your liberation your transformation or your nibbana so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhityo vajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi digayuko bhava ुखुंच Bless you.